voting for the fourth phase of Lok Sabha elections has begun. In this phase, let's tell you, 96 seats spread across nine states and one union territory are in poll fray. In Andhra Pradesh, all 25 Lok Sabha constituencies as well as 175 assembly seats are going to polls today. In fact, as many as 503 candidates are in the fray for Lok Sabha and 2,705 candidates for assembly polls. In Telangana, polling is taking place on 17 seats. Hyderabad, of course, will witness a much-anticipated poll battle between AIMI President OAC and BJP's Madhavi Lata. Remember, BJP's first female candidate from this particular seat. When we talk about Telangana, Telangana's Kamam seat is set to witness a triangular contest between the Congress, the BRS and the BJP. My colleague Saumit first breaks this down for us. Well, big day for Telangana and Andhra. Right now, we are reporting from a polling station here in Malkajgiri Parliament Constituency in cantonment area. And uh, people, all the arrangements have been made initially, and uh, people are, the voters are queuing up uh, at the polling station to exercise their franchise. And, uh, you know, Election Commission is also uh, providing logistical support, and even police have, uh, uh, you know, made all the arrangements at all the polling stations. And we can clearly see here, this is the polling station here in the Hyderabad city uh, uh, in Malkajgiri Parliament Constituency. And so you have voted. You exercise your franchise. Yes. Uh, so, what would you like to, on on what issues you have voted for? Nation. So, uh -huh. development of the nation. So, basically, we are hearing same voice from several voters here, and the voters have queued up here uh, to uh, cast their vote in Telangana. The polling is on on 17 uh, parliament seats in Andhra Pradesh. The polling is on on 175 assembly seats and on 25 parliament seats. So. How High decibel campaign I was witnessed here in Hyderabad, here in Telangana. So we have to wait and see. So we have to wait and see how you know uh, how, who will uh, you know uh, the man, who will get the mandate. But as of now, uh, without error, fortunately, in, in all polling stations, the voting has begun, and voters are queuing up at uh, polling stations uh, to exercise their franchise. And several leaders, top leaders like uh, Asaduddin Owaisi, Kishan Reddy, and uh, Madhavilata. Madhavilata just uh, voted here in this polling booth. So even after uh, you know voting, she has appealed the voters to come out, turn up to the polling stations, and you know uh, cast their votes. Well, yes. Voters are turning up in huge number to the polling stations, and we have to wait and see whether uh, the number will increase uh, because you know it was around 60 percent last time, so 60 61. So, this time, you know, all are appealing voters to come out and uh, uh, you know, exercise the franchise. And when it comes to the Hyderabad seat, like you asked, you know, high decibel campaign has taken place in from you know, a uh, union home minister for the first time, even uh, you know, has campaigned. The Hyderabad Soul City. So we have to wait and see, uh, you know, who will get the mandate. But public are, uh, you know, uh, queuing up at the polling stations, and uh, con you know, uh, the uh, uh, even candidates from the Hyderabad City, from BJP, and also from the MIM, Asaduddin Owaisi and Madhavilata, both of them are confident enough. They are saying that uh, this time, Owaisi is saying that, you know, he will be winning for the fifth time, and also at the same time, you know, Madhavilata is also saying that she will be uh, winning uh, this time, and uh, she will be breaking that record. All right, there's lots to talk about this whole uh, South focus. Uh, let me also get in my guest this morning, Rekha Rao, who is a political analyst. Rekha, thank you very much for your time and joining us here on Miruna. I'm going to come back to you in a couple of minutes. I'm going to go straight across to my colleague, Varshini, who's joining me live on the broadcast. Varshini, very good morning. Of course, in terms of what we're looking at from where you're reporting, I understand Pavan Kalyan is expected to be voting or has just actually cast his vote, uh, but more so about the voter turnout. What is it looking like? What are the pressing concerns which will really decide them coming out and casting their exercise? Their mandate, rather. Well, uh, Pawan Kalyan just voted and uh, he uh, has just left this place. Massive crowd, massive fan base for the actor uh, turned politician. Uh, but, uh, you know, the situation in Andhra Pradesh is a very, very interesting one as we are seeing a Lok Sabha fight, a Legislative Assembly fight that is ongoing. And we are able to see extremely huge number of people coming to the, uh, you know, uh, uh, polling stations early in 
the morning and we are able to see massive crowd up at the polling station everywhere to cast their vote. Like if you see from 2019, Andhra Pradesh was the state that had the highest polling. Therefore, this year also we can see that kind of an attendance of all the voters who are coming to the polling stations to cast their votes, which is a very good sign as far as these elections is concerned. Because it is a very important battle for the TDP and the YSRCP. The YSRCP is trying so hard to retain the government, whereas uh, the TDP uh, and its leaders are trying equally hard to come back to power, which they la lost in 2019. And when Chandrababu Naidu is concerned, he is a very, uh, you know, star kind of a figure here who's already been chief minister for three times and who's also trying to uh, get back on pa uh, in power uh, as soon as uh, these elections get over. But YSRCP is no less, where Jagan Mohan Reddy is also putting up a great fight. But the only important thing that is adding here to the TDP side is the alliance with the Jan Janasena party and the BJP which is giving additional strength to the TDP and Chandrababu Naidu to uh, pr perform here. Therefore uh, out of the 175 seats last time around in 2019 it was a landslide win for uh, Jagan Mogan Reddy where he got 151 seats but this time will it happen or will it be neck to neck? Uh, will there be a hung assembly? They go in so many questions that is uh, that the people are waiting to answer. So we will uh, get to know that on June 4th, but for today we are seeing right. a very interesting fight. And right now we are in Mangalgiri, where uh, Pawan Kalyan casted it vote, but Pawan Kalyan is fighting from Pitapuram, which is also an interesting fight. But Mangalagiri, is, as far as Mangalagiri mm. is concerned, uh, the son of Chandrababu Naidu, Nara Lokesh, is contesting. So big names all have casted their vote. We'll have to wait and see how much uh, polling percentage we are able to see at the end of today. Absolutely, Vashini. In fact, you uh, broke that down for us. In fact, if anybody did not know what's really happening in terms of the political tussle, what are the pressing concerns and how, like you mentioned, how it's going to turn out remains to be seen. But like you have said, great voter turnout so far. Uh, what are the numbers will come in in a while? We shall know. But thank you very much for drawing perspective as far as this is concerned. But since we're tracking everything to do with the Lok Sabha polls, remember, Vashini just reported from there, but we're continuing to track everything to do with phase four. So all my colleagues joining us, uh, from every single seat that matters. So let's take a look at the fact that we have all our reporters on ground, whether we're talking about Adib, Varshini, Saumit, Shreya, uh, Neha as well is joining us. In fact, she is reporting from Andhra Pradesh. So let me get a quick word from Neha. Neha, very good morning to you. Clearly with citizens casting their mandate today, we heard what Varshini had to say. Very interesting points in terms of politically land, the landscape of it, what we've seen in the past couple of years for Andhra, that is. What are you picking up on the ground? What are the citizens saying? What would be the driving factors? And more interestingly, the tussle between the politicians, a particular seat that we should watch out for, Neha? Well, absolutely, Nivedana. You know, in fact, one can't cover the Andhra elections without visiting Kadapa. Now, Kadapa, of course, you know, the heart of Andhra here. Quite literally, we're bringing you this live here from the YSR Ghat. Now, this constituency of Kadapa, in fact, you know, has been a thoroughfare of, you know, of course, the YSR CP here. Now, after Jagan Mohan Reddy, of course, got into power here. But, you know, even prior to that, of course, the legacy that his father, why is Rajshekar Reddy is left behind here? You know, something, of course, that echoes quite literally. We've been speaking with several voters cutting across party lines. You know, irrespective of, of course, whom they're going to be voting for today, all of them really, of course, you know, going on to praise the kind of work that he's done here. Now, of course, you know, with that being said, even as we're waiting here for, you know, why is Sharmila to come out to cast her vote? Navedana, the fact is that, you know, we're seeing that Andhra Pradesh today is not just voting hmm. for the Lok Sabha, but also for their own assembly segment, where and of right. course, you know, there's a big divide over here that's out in the open there in the, uh, you know, family. Of course, one thing that's quite crucial, even from Kadapa for that matter, is the fact that if the Congress party in the state of Andhra Pradesh is likely to bag any seats, then it's possibly going to be the Kadapa seat, is what several political analysts have been saying, given the fact that, you know, why Sharmila Reddy, of course, has been fielded here. Her mother recently put out a video as well, which, of course, you know, is a huge shot in the arm for her here, suggesting that, you know, people of course should vote her
Shilpa here and not Jagan. Well, of course, you know, Nivedna, it really, uh, you know, really remains to be seen right now. The fact is that Kadapa, of course, you know, a very, very keenly contested seat here. The fact that the Chief Minister himself also, of course, you know, contesting from here. We spoke with him a little while earlier. He was seeming quite confident. We'll, of course, have to wait and see basic issues like drinking water that still remain a huge challenge here is possibly something that's going to be driving the voters, you know, hmm. as they go into vote for today. Absolutely, Neha. In fact, you are saying that it's going to be a mouthwatering clash. We do see that. But of course, voters would have decided on what factors will drive them to the polling booth and make that difference. But Neha, thank you very much for also telling us the political background of the same. We'd leave it to that. Uh, but let me go across to my guests. I do understand that Anurag Naidu, political analyst, is also joining me on the show this morning. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Naidu, for taking the time out. But Rekha, you have, of course, been extremely patient. We do know in terms of television and covering the same, uh, we do go tend to go on ground to find out what voters are deciding. So let me begin with that, Rekha. Analyzing what even Neha or for that matter, Varshini were talking about, citizens do have pressing concerns. But politically speaking, uh, how do you really see this? What do you think will be the driving factors in terms of this elections? Uh, the expectations of a community or a society depends upon the socio-economic factors. When we talk about those people who doesn't come under welfare schemes, their expectations will be infrastructure, then good facilities, then no corruption in that way. And the people who come under that category where welfare schemes are there, for them the immediate thing is roti, kapra, makan, apart from that, vidya and vaidya. And obviously the fuel for cooking and all. So coming to Telangana, yes, I think there is a little displeasure and the chances of BRS getting more seats is there because the Congress government, the, cover, the current government, no doubt it has announced wonderful freebies, welfare schemes. Initially, people were very happy, but luck or unluck or by chance, things are cropping up, they are not able to deliver. Hmm. So there is a little bit of unhappiness. For example, the Kalyan Lakshmi or Shadi Mubarak, the girls are getting married and the money or the amount what was promised is they are not getting it. So there is one displeasure. And again, the free houses, the dignity houses, uh, the scheme is stopped now. They are not getting it. No doubt they have the paper, but again, they are not getting it. And again, when we talk about different schemes are there, which is not happening, like electricity, 200 units, which most of the people are not getting. And again, the electricity problem has started. Water problem has started. And coming to the higher society, uh, they are a little unhappy with BJP because of electoral bonds, they feel. They had a lot of trust on BJP, but again, the electoral bonds, they brought a little things bad. And again, ED rate, CBI rate, there is a strong feeling that people in power, they are misusing. For example, in 2004 and 14, UPA government, there were only 112 uh, rates. But again, between 2014 and 23, there were 3,100 uh, rates in the locations. Uh, now, the big question is that 95% of the posts or the raids were for uh, people who do not belong to BJP. And again, there is a strong faith in the highest strata of the society, the educated one, that you commit a wrong and then you uh, join BJP, things will take its own this thing. And again, when we talk about the speech of our Honorable Prime Minister, I think it has to be more dignified and it has to be like a uh, Prime Minister. He is talking everything which is not required. One can feel the frustration, the fear, how things are going to be. So in Telangana, chances of BRS is good. All right. Okay. As you give them that particular report card and also political analyze it for us. Mr. Naidu, do you really agree with the way um, Rekha has, of course, seen this very interesting point that she spoke about the freebies? We do know, of course, in terms of state elections, it did work in favour with that big mandate that they got. Do you think you would see one of those factors, what citizens would think about would be freebies, or do you think there would be other uh, aspects that the citizens thinking about while casting their vote today? Well, I think one interesting fact is I'm in Mangalgiri right now and I was joined by your reporter Varshini in the line when I was standing to uh, do my polling. And right. uh, it took me one and a half hour, you know. 
And why I'm telling you this question of yours is important is the turnout in Andhra is going to be record this year. Andhra always has been a very politically aware state. Mm. We've seen electoral turnout to be 85, 83 percentage. This time it's going to be closer to 85 is what I believe. And why it is important in respect to your question is okay. Andhra Pradesh current government has been rolling out social welfare schemes no other in the history of India. And we all know very well this government, that is the government of the day in Andhra, the only war cry, only USP that they've been calling out is the social welfare scheme, the freebies, the cash transfer, direct transfer, and, 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 and everything, right? So if you see the euphoria, if you see the energy in the people, uh, 80, 85 percent people coming out, the result of this election will be a testimony of the fact, will be an examination, will be a litmus test, whether people buy into this freebies and the social welfare schemes or not, or people want development, the result of this election will very much speak for itself. So uh, that's exactly why I say Andhra Pradesh is in a point of inflection, wherein, for the first time ever, it is going to enter into a four-way contest Right in many seats now. Uh, Neha also was covering from Kadapa. She mentioned about Sharmila, the Congress hopes of winning the seat. There is Janasena Party going to be opening their account in a big time. BJP re-emerging in Andhra. So four different political parties, you know, trying their luck out. Of course, there's a mega alliance with an NDA. There is YSR Congress fighting on its own. Congress also trying to, you know, there are a couple of more seats as an MLA. There is a talk that Congress might win. So Andhra Pradesh is at a point of inflection, and it will throw up results which will set in into getting into the history. And this will be something which we have to see because the whole focus of the current government, 85, 90% of the finances of the capital expenditure of the government has been going into the direct transfer. How would, how would this result in? And not to forget, the YSR Congress war cry for this particular election has been me intlo manchi jargunte. That means if any good has happened to your home, in your family, please vote for me. Otherwise, don't vote for me. That is an audacity mm. with which the chief minister is trying to say that he has reached out to every single voter of this state. So whether this voter respects that scheme, freebie, or it, uh, the voter has something else uh, in his or her mind, which this will be something that will come out uh, as the results uh, you know, speak on June 4th. But this election voter turnout, I'm very encouraged because I have joined your uh, panel in, in, in uh, Bangalore elections. I was, uh, you know, I joined Padmaja and a lot of other uh, panelists and other uh, anchors. I have been with uh, the national media, I've covered all four or five phases. This particular phase, I see the turnout is going to be all-time high. And this will be a testimony, a litmus test, not only for, for the people, but also for the political parties to get the right uh, expectation from the people recorded. And I surely believe that this particular indicator, uh, the election results in Andhra Pradesh, will set in a new parameter and will set in a new benchmark on how the government should behave or uh, should function uh, going forward. All right, Anurag. In fact, as you draw perspective for us and also tell us what the on-ground situation is looking like, which is great because at the end of the day, it is that particular uh, voting right that every citizen has and you would want to see essentially the difference on the ground because there's nobody better than a citizen, like I always say, to understand what development one has seen or what they have not, which is it would drive them to be making that difference. Having said that, of course, political reactions coming in. Let's listen in to what G. Kishan Reddy as well as Paruchari Gopala Krishna had to say. Jarur aake aapka vote daliye. Ye mahattar hai. Ye parliament ka elections hai. So, compulsorily, you please come. Young people, old people also I am requesting. हम मैं ओर डाला हूँ हमारे परिवार के साथ और हमारे आजुबाजे हमारे फ्रेंड्स नियर सभी लोग मेरे साथ आए सभी लोग ओर डाले हैं मैं सभी लोगों से यही अनुरोध करता हूँ आज जो पोलिंग डे है भारत सरकार हो इलेक्शन कमीशन हो पोलिंग डे के दिन हालडे देते हैं मगर कुछ लोग ये पोलिंग डे को सिर्फ हालडे मानते हैं ये ऐसा नहीं करना चा� पोलिंग डालने के बाद हालडे बनाइए आज जो वातावरण भी अच्छा है आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री बार बार बोलते हैं ये प्रजातंत्र का त्यौहार है ये फेस्टिवल ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इस फेस्टिवल ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी को मानकर सभी लोग वोट डालना अपना जिम्मेदारी है डॉक्टर अब्दुल कलाम जी बार बार बोलते थे वोट इज़ अ फंडामेंटल राइट मगर वोट डालना भी अपना जिम्मेदारी है ऐसा अब्दुल कलाम जी बोलते हैं इसीलिए मैं सभी लोगों से प्रार्थना करता हूँ जब भी आपका एरिया में पोलिंग होगा उस दिन 
पोलिंग डालना चाहिए देश के लिए देश के विकास के लिए देश के रक्षा के लिए देश का गौरव बढ़ाने के लिए गरीबों के हित के लिए और डालना चाहिए और अच्छे पार्टी को अच्छे संसद को जिताना चाहिए यही मैं सभी लोगों से प्रार्थना करता हूँ All right, uh, Anurag and Rekha, we did hear those political reactions, voter appeal rather. In fact, that's very interesting because even if you were to talk about urban voters, that did not see a great number if you were to talk about perspective from a city like Bengaluru, uh, essentially then goes on to speak that a citizen should not crib if they don't come out and exercise their mandate. Having said that, Rekha, let me come back to you as far as the entire political tussle and contest here is concerned. Um, is there a particular fight that you think will change the narrative of it? Uh, what do you think politicians will be gunning on in terms of the campaign? Of course, we've seen how it is. Even if we talk about a seat like Hyderabad, we all know the uh, optics over there, what is one can expect between OAC and Madhavi Lata, for example. How do you read into the political situation which was there previously and what possibly might have changed in 2024 as compared to 2019, Rekha? Uh, talking about OAC and Madhavi Lata Ji, uh, initially, before she got the ticket, she was speaking sense. She was talking about growth, development, dirt in uh, old Hyderabad. And once uh, once the ticket was announced, mm. her narrative changed. And uh, there was a lot of arrogance, what can be seen. And her talk, her campaigning became, more of, became more, uh, very unprofessional. Instead of talking about development, unemployment, education and all, she was talking about mantras, shlokas, and calling herself uh, Shakti. Let me tell you, like she is not only Shakti, we women too are Shakti. She cannot personify. And this anger is there among women. So 4th June will decide whether she is going to get or not. She would have definitely one provided her narrative and her talk was more professional. And just now you played a recording of Kishinji, Kishinji okay. sir, uh, requesting the youth to come. One thing I tell all the political leaders, if the youth is not coming forward, we need to check yeah. the rules, the reason why they are not coming. Are they not confident about the political leaders? Are they unhappy? Whenever there is unhappiness, obviously the youth, the people, they will not come. If you see the people from the slum, from the lower strata, economically backward people, they come and they vote because they get the benefit and they are politically very active. But middle class and, and the youth who are educated, they don't find anything, and since uh, only uh, like the lower strata of the society, the economically uh, little unfortunate ones, they are happy with the schemes. But again, the other sector who get nothing, so they are not involving. And again, so much of corruption they are reading in the newspapers, in the social media, they feel India cannot be changed. And that is the thing what has sunk deep into the youth. So instead of all the political leaders coming out, they when they are campaigning, they should talk sense, it should be constructive criticism rather than just speaking nonsense about the other parties. These political leaders, they have to behave like educated ones before they talk. Right. I think they should go and watch the videos of how the political leaders of Western countries they speak. So dignified, so professional, and here, apart from abusing, using dirty language, nothing is there. So the hope is dying in the youth because of these political leaders, not that they are not conscious about their political rights. This is the reason. It is high time we need to have SOP for these political leaders, what to talk, how much to talk, and what to mm. do. Yeah. Very interesting point, Rekha. As you pointed out, in fact, on Mirror Now, we did this very interesting show called Youthgram. I also had the opportunity to talk to youth to find out, you know, what are their pressing concerns, what they would like to see in their leaders. And this is a generation that's extremely sure of what they want and what they don't want in any particular aspect of their life, that is. So let me take that point across to Anurag. Anurag, as far as you, of course, mentioned with the voter turnout being great, you understand that the numbers might be seeing an increase. Uh, but at the end of the Today it is uh, true uh, with the fact that in a democracy, the youth are actually the future of tomorrow. Uh, and why I talk about that particular program that we did is because many of the youngsters have spoken about what the issues that politicians speak about is not really development, what would resonate with them. Let's say, you know, digital media or artificial intelligence it's very polarized politics do you think that would be a turnaround factor for the youth to maybe or may not be to come out and vote no i think i have a different view because i've been uh, in this political circles for over a month mm. now 
you know, helping out campaigns for a few of my family members and yeah. their friends. You know, I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that I'm very disappointed with, the same youth that you're talking about. And first of all, let's understand the youth that we are talking about or maybe you're mentioning is the urban youth, whether it is Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, who votes in the city or the constituencies in the city, right? So we do have leaders like Tejasvi Surya who right. speak tech. We do have, you know, leaders like Annamalai. We do have other leaders in the city. But the majority of the electoral population is still in the suburban and the rural areas, uh, rural pockets. And also the youth of this particular area. One thing that I'm very, very disappointed and I want to express it on national media. While I was campaigning, the so-called study educated youth who are working in the bank or has been reaching out to their leaders to sponsor their tickets to come down. And, you know, they, they have offered uh, to pay money to them and they have happily accepted the cash over you know, the last two days and they come out to vote and then they again I'll go to the leader and say, hey, look, I have to go back to Hyderabad. Please book a ticket for me. This has been the trend. This is the reality. I have seen it on the ground and this is the, the most, the, the most I would say, disappointing aspect of the youth today before we go and credit them for what they So they need to, the voters need to change before the leaders change. I totally disagree with Rekhaji when they say, oh, leaders have to change, leaders have to speak. No, the leaders are speaking the tone and the leaders are speaking the language that the people want them to speak. If the people do not change in the entire length and breadth of uh, Andhra Pradesh, I have covered almost 23 constituencies. I can name each and every constituent. I challenge any reporter, any person involved in this 175 seats to tell me that one seat or one candidate has not paid a single rupee. It is both the parties, both candidates give this hmm. token money uh, to, to every single voter they offer. I mean, by, with all due respect, there are voters they, they, who reject, but majority of them have accepted and right. the cash for vote is a reality that we live in. And that is something we need to change. If we don't change there and we call names to the leaders or we try to mock the leader, we, we try to say our leaders are not good, won't work out. So it is for the voters, for, the, for, for them to change first and then expect the leaders to drive change for themselves. So this is something we need to say. Also, we spoke about Madhvi Lata. I'll tell you a very interesting fact. And I'm not in support of Madhvi Lata, nor am I opposed. But she's been a personality on the TV even before she entered the electoral fray. You, if you see the ratings and the TRPs and the viewership that she has before and now, it is a record viewership that she's been able to do it now. So whether her discourse or whether her appeal has been good or bad, it is for the people to decide, Rekhaji. It is people of Hyderabad are smart enough, they will decide. Whether she gets a majority of vote or not, whether she wins or not, how many seats, how many votes she, she's able to draw, it is for the people to decide. But the fact is, there has been an unprecedented focus on Madhavi Lataji. At least she has been able to draw attention. At least she has been able to galvanize the cadre. She has been able to give energy to the cadre. In Telangana, mark my word, BJP will see an all-time high figure in mm. the low parliamentary seats. So if BJP is seeing that kind of a spike in Telangana, it is for the people of Telangana. You should go and ask people of Telangana what is making them vote for a party uh, which has pro pro probably got four or less than four seats in the past two elections. So you need to also introspect, just not not just by calling, uh, you know, Madhvi Lataji good or bad. You don't, it's not going to give us anything. But eventually you will see the voter turnout is very encouraging. There is an acceptance for a political campaign in the social circles. The viewerships are all-time high. If you see her you Instagram, YouTube channel, the viewership is all-time high. So there is something which is kind of creating that change. So we need to wait and watch how this, uh, you know, the, the result turns out to be. So I would say the voters have to first change before we expect our leaders to change because we have to get the leaders what we expect or how we treat our leaders, the leaders will start treating us. All right. Anurag, you have, of course, drawn enough perspective for anyone to really understand all aspects of it. But having said that, I'm going to continue this conversation with both of you. But since we track all the political developments as well, let's listen to what Chandra Babu Naidu as well as Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy had to say. Good governance or you want to have a bright future, you have to go and vote. Then only you will have a right to demand. Today I'm seeing, I have seen the crowd. Never in my life or in my political career I have seen this type of crowds. It is an indication people are willing to vote and also they want to vote by any choice. And again, from America all the way they have come to vote. All over the country, Bombay, Bombay, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, everywhere people have come. Even vegetable vendors, even labor, they have come with their own expenditure. So you think it's anti 
Is it for me? I could not get the question. There was yes, a lot Rekha. of disturbance. All right. Can you hear me now? Voice breaking. Not audible. Not audible. All right. We'll uh, get that checked in terms of uh, what is really transpired there. If I'm audible, I'm quickly going to ask you this. The southern push by the Prime Minister, um, do you think that's going to be translating into big numbers for the BJP like Anurag was saying? If I'm audible, please do go ahead and answer it. Uh, yeah, I think this time uh, the number what BJP is going to get, it is going to be little less because there is a lot of, there is a feeling going on that uh, BJP is playing politics on the basis of religion, Hindus and Muslims. I also work in slums and I also interact with people and since being a social activist. So whenever I interact, the feedback what I get from the mm. people is that there is, it's all the same. They say during festivals, we Hindus and Muslims, we celebrate together, but now there is a feeling of Hindus and Muslims. So BJP is playing on that. And again, there is a feeling that if you open your mouth, you are ED or CBI, things are going to happen. So that is what it is going on. And again, the recent what uh, it happened, like income redistribution, that uh, allegation what was on... Uh, this Petroda, and again, that racism and all, all these things are giving negative to BJP people. And I think this time, 120 percent, it is going to be BRS who is going to get, like last time, nine it got. So nine or more than that. People now, they want BRS to come back because they have seen the difference of the current government, which is five to six months old, and what they have experienced. And BJP things are a little on the lower side because they have become very uh, negative their talk and speeches, their, rhetor their rhetorics are really discouraging and not professional. Anyway, June 4th is the time we need to wait and watch. All right, Rekha. But when I interact with the people, this is what I sure. understand. You're gathering. All right. You believe that it's going to be uh, BRS whole way. But like you rightly pointed out, June 4th is when we'll know the mandate of the people. But thank you very much for taking the time out. You as well as Anurag uh, for drawing more perspective as far as the battle of overall Andhra Pradesh and Telangana is concerned.